Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I want to say something. I'm starting to feel as if this might be the easiest when when this bull run comes, when it comes. This might be the easiest life changing gains I think people will ever make ever, ever. Um, that's just my opinion, of course, not financial advice, but I'm looking at how a lot of individuals are positioning themselves. I'm looking at the movement of certain cryptos. I'm looking at how low some of those prices have gone and then the massive accumulation that's happening. Pay attention to that massive accumulation. I know what I have also. And I'm looking at the price actions. I'm like saying to myself, this might be easy. Why do I say that? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a one variable I'm not putting in there. Now, we've been talking, if you've been following the channel for a few months now, I always once in a while bring this up, the cash on the side. You've heard me say that before, right? But look at this. We got a little update and the cash pile is bigger than ever. But we know other things are already doing well, so why isn't the cash going there? This article says the $8.8 trillion cash pile that has stock market bulls salivating. Wait, we can remove the stock market part for a minute. That cash has just been sitting on the side. It doesn't matter who's salivating over it. It's just been on the side. They pulled that out of the banks. They pulled that out of everything. We know that big money people, big money institutions have just been sitting on that cash. It's been months. We've been covering it. Eight, it's up. It's, go, it's only gone up. $8.8 trillion. What do you think they're waiting on, folks? Listen, the fastest way to make money, everybody knows this. The legacy system knows this. Big money individuals know this. There is there is an earthquake coming, in my humble opinion. Once again, you don't have to agree with me. There's an earthquake coming, life changing. You know, they, they've said this in other bull, other bull runs. And I'm going to I'm going to add this in. Where in other bull runs, people have said, oh, this is going to be life changing. And it was that 2021 bull run. Lots of millionaires were made people. Everybody was making disgusting amount, amounts of money at that time. I think this time around and I think and I'm also going to say I think this is one of the last times I do. I think this is one of this is the, I think this is going to be the big one. I could be wrong. I think this is going to be the big one. I do. The last true time. Well, where people might make good gains in other bull runs to come. I think this is the last life changing one where people can make the most gains the easiest. And it's because of things like this. This is where the big money finally really steps in and shows you what real whales are about. Eight point eight trillion dollars is just sitting there. Now, while the stock market people think, oh, that's going to come to us. It's like, why didn't it already? Why didn't it already? Well, we're waiting for things to come down. I mean, yeah, that's possible. No. You just had the Bitcoin ETFs pop off. They just began, right? They're starting to heat up a little bit. You got the, you have the Ethereum ETFs about to pop off. You think that they don't want to, you know, 3X, 5X their money or could go way, way higher that than that when you get to altcoins. Think about that for a minute. Some of these altcoins do insane gains when the bull runs happen. That's why there's so much massive accumulation when it's down periods. That's why some people, you know, I know it gets annoying. Uh, there's a lot of people that always say a lot of article writers that say, you know, buy when it buy the dip and, you know, people get tired of that and buy when things are down. That's because that's literally what they're doing. They can only say what they're doing. And well, I would think, right. Um, and it's hard to not say or speak based on the habits that you, that you have. Right. So that's what they do. They buy when the when the, when the stuff is down because they know they've lived through that before where those prices, some of those things. If you know what's powerful, if you know what's potent. Right. Some people believe in bank coins. Some people believe in utility coins. Um, some people believe in them, meme coins and such. I don't recommend meme coins, but they do. And they just well, when that bull run happens, they just start skyrocketing. You'd be surprised at how uh, just the, it looks like the littlest bit of gains and cents and things like that. When you're sitting on um, 50,000, 100,000, 200,000 of some of these uh, cryptos and that you start to see that five cent increase, 10 cent increase. And it's like, but when you have that much stuff, I'm like, it's like, whoa, that's, there could be some pretty good gains depending on how low you bought that stuff and how much you have. You get what I'm saying? And a lot of these people have been stacking and stacking and stacking. So back, back to this. That 8.8 trillion, I know I'm a little all over the place. It's going to be a different type of video, but my mind is like very excited right now. But that 8.8 trillion, I believe they're waiting on the crypto bull run. 
I, I, and it's not they're waiting like how retail waits. I don't think they're waiting for to see things start to go up. I think they're waiting on certain catalysts that their advisors have to give the green light on. And when their advisors tell them, hey, these catalysts are here now, you'll start to see that eight point eight trillion dollars cash pile move because they want that to make major money. Don't get me wrong. Some of this cash right here. They can already have it making money, depending on where they're ha they're holding it, right? But no, they want to make insane amounts of gains. Remember, I told you before, they don't want to be millionaires anymore, billionaires. Well, I mean, there's millionaires that want to be billionaires, and there's billionaires that want to say, "Hmm, I want to see how high I can go." Hell, I, I want to get, I want to see how close I can get to five hundred billion, you know, and, and maybe somebody more ambitious. I want to see how close I can get to trillions. Like they want more. Is what I'm saying. I think this is going to be the biggest opportunity of all time. But like I said, once again, that's just my humble opinion. It says stock market bulls salivating, which is interesting. It's like why 8.8 .8 trillion cash pile on the side, just sitting there. It been, it's been sitting there for months. Why isn't crypto salivating? It should be. It should be. It's the new kid on the block, so to speak. It's the new kid on the block. It can make way bigger gains, way faster than the stock market. Why wouldn't a huge swath of that come to crypto? I think that it would. I think that it would. And I think that legit projects, I think legit projects are going to be the biggest winners. I do. I do. I wouldn't be surprised when everything starts to pop off if you start to see the SEC go after some of these uh, very, very bad projects. You know, um, you know what I'm talking about it'll be interesting. We'll see. We'll see. But um, I'm looking at uh, also, I'm keeping in mind all of these different predictions that we've been seeing um, about how explosive Bitcoin may be in a few months time, whether it's because the ETF start to pick up, the ETF action start to pick up. Because like I said, that takes time to kick in or the Bitcoin halving. There's so many things that traditional money just getting used to Bitcoin that can come in. There could be an altcoin season that pops off. But there's something else I want to cover here. OK, that I think is going to be huge. I've been seeing a massive amount of articles. By the way, if you like this video, please, everybody click that like button. I would greatly appreciate that. And also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate that as well. Um, now, there's something else that I'm taking into account. I've been seeing a multitude of articles like this. This article is titled famed analyst Richard Bove says U.S. dollar is finished as world's reserve currency. That's eye opening. Listen, the U.S. as a as a world power, it has to have something. It has to have something as a world reserve currency. You tell me what they could use to replace that. And I don't think that the U.S. is going to be the leader in going back to gold if the U.S. dollar at some point in the future. There's no timeline on this, so I'm not taking it as though Richard Bove is saying today the dollar is done. Like, no, I think he said it's, it's obviously over a period of time. They have to, uh, you know, cram all that and sum that up for you in this headline. Right. Um, I just want to put that out there because I know people will debate about that. And um, so something has to take the place of that. What? Why do you really believe? Listen, they don't. Oh, it's so many ways they can get around the whole. I will never let a CBDC happen. Digital dollar happen uh, out of necessity. Sometimes, like I said, I tried to say this in a, another video. It doesn't take a lot to force something through the ramrod something through. I mean, whether it's through some type, type of catastrophe catastrophe, financial collapse. Then on top of that, look at how much they pass through in some of these bills. You look at some of these bills that they're they're they're. Um, trying to pass in a few hours. They come to the people's desk. They put this stack of papers that's this big. We're talking thousands of pages on there, right? They say, we got to pass this in the next four hours. We got to pass this in the next day, something like that. It just insert your timeline here. It's very short. It's much too short to read 1,000 pages, 3,000 pages, 8,000 pages. Nobody can know what's in there. They can easily pass something through in one of those things, right? And then have their digital dollar or whatever. And we all know what systems work with the government. Look, and, and, and like I said, this is not the only individual calling for things like this. Oh, the U.S. dollar is done. I mean, I've even seen the U.S. Treasury show signs of being concerned about the U.S. dollar. And I've read those articles to you. Right. So once again, fame analyst Richard Bove says U.S. dollar is finished as world's reserve currency. Now, I don't agree with him on this. It says he says he expects China to overtake U.S. economy. <sighs> That's so. um because I know a lot of the dynamics there, China's financial system is doing very, very bad. 
I'll say that they're doing very, very bad, at least from the data that I'm seeing. And if that's if that's right, if that's correct, um, their shadow banks over there are doing extremely terrible. So I, I just I don't know. I'm a little bit. I got to look. At, I have to look at that data a little bit closer, but I don't know that I agree with this individual on that. But the U.S. dollar having problems. Yes. But I think it's mostly internal. It says here. Renowned financial analyst Richard Bove shared his dire outlook for the U.S. economy in an interview uh, on, in, with the New York Times on Saturday. Uh, he officially announced his retirement last week, voicing concerns about the future of the U.S. dollar. See, he can talk now. There's a lot of people that want to speak, but they don't. They don't do it because they don't want to ruin their careers. But once their career is over, they wind up telling you something, right? Because now it doesn't matter. It says, quote, the dollar is finished as the world's reserve currency. We just saw some countries, uh, you know, uh, uh, allegedly, according to certain articles, which I have to verify, they say certain countries just made it official with BRICS and they were considering considering BRICS membership. And there were false reports before about them joining BRICS, but now allegedly they say it's official with certain countries over there with BRICS. But that means a going going away from the dollar for more powerful countries, right? All right. And a lot of you know you've seen those articles. But here, I'm, and I'm gonna tie this together. Trust me, we're going somewhere because things, things, it's crazy because things are looking bad and good at the same time. It depends on your positioning here. This all leads, I'm telling you. If this plays out, this all leads to the biggest bull run of all time, the most the biggest life changing gains people have ever seen. If they love that 2021 bull run, they're going to definitely love this next one. If if it's not a guarantee, if it all plays out according to plan, to according to what I'm seeing here. Right. So you have that going on. But wait a minute. Wait one moment here. Let's go here. Another article. I just want to show you a few. There's a multitude of articles just the last five days just coming out like this. Right. Uh, and, and we read some of some that were similar to this, like even from Jamie Dimon, uh, you know, uh, saying certain things. Now, this article here is from finance.yahoo.com, and it is titled Black Swan Author. Uh, Nassim Taleb, who correctly called called the 2008 financial crisis, says the U.S. is in a death spiral over government debt. We just heard another. I believe the other individual was an economist say something similar to this. Remember, we covered an article like that. We ha So all of these individuals and this article just came out on January 31st. OK, um, all these individuals are sort of. Letting the people know, hey, something's wrong here, right? Let's read this little tidbit because I'm going somewhere with this. It says it's been dubbed the most predictable, quote, most predictable crisis, unquote, facing the U.S. economy. Yeah. Remember the other article? It was maybe three or four videos back. Somebody was saying that um, th that it was the greatest threat. Remember that one? It was the great. That was I think that was literally what the video was titled, which is what a lot of people took umbrage to. But it was like I'm reading from the article. I'm giving you the facts of what's what's there. This is what the people said. You make up your own mind on that. But it said the greatest threat to America was this particular debt crisis. That's what the other person said. It said it's been dubbed the most predictable crisis facing the U.S. economy. But an expert has warned it will take a miracle, quote, miracle to save America from its national debt problem. And we've gone over it before. All the negatives of having massive national debt. Like I said, it's sort of like uh, the United States is, is bringing great harm to itself. It doesn't have to worry about outside threats. It doesn't have to worry about something trying to collapse them from the outside. The United States is collapsing itself from the inside from a lot of bad practices. Right. But now how does that connect to the new financial system? And even greater than that, the utility coins, all of that, I consider a part of the new financial system. Now, this is the part where it's very um, difficult to convey these types of thoughts. The people I've been monitoring in various articles and under some of those articles, they have like a comment section and such. Right. Um, I've been reading certain comments over like the past two weeks. I just want to get an a, a, a inkling of like what the people are feeling. And then also I'll say this, I, you know, from time to time, I'll swipe on TikTok and then I'll I, I'm getting flooded with financial videos as well, like financial information. I go in those comment sections and I've been reading some of, of, of what the people are saying. And I'm telling you right now, the people are beyond desperate for capital and and, and it's, it's a very uh, unique desperation now i've seen people in desperation when i was younger 
where that desperation causes them to save money. But there's an interesting dynamic that's happening here right now with the current generations. Now, they're in desperation for money, for capital. But at the same time, I've read a plethora of articles where they don't feel they have any future. They don't feel they have any future. They don't feel they have uh, uh, any uh, any reason to look forward to a retirement. You can look all of this up, right? So they're willing to take risks with their money to make some capital to YOLO, you only live once, you know, type of living today. They want to, they just live for today. So now you have a massive amount of desperate people who can't afford apartments, can't afford homes. Maybe they can't take that vacation that they wanted, but they need capital. Now, one of the recurring themes, right? And I hate to say it, but this is what the people have been saying. I read it with my, I read it, Right. Multiple times over the last two weeks, I've read people in comment sections saying things, and this shows their the level of desperation. They're saying things like, oh, you know, uh, if I don't have money for retirement, then I'm just going to start scamming and things like that. This is what they're saying. I know some of you seen this. This is, and I know they're saying it in a joking way, but a lot of times people say truths in joking ways. It's a pervading mentality, right? It's like uh, the, the ancient Latin phrase in vino veritas, there is truth in wine, right? So when people are, it's the same way with jokes. There's a lot of truth in jokes, right? Um, so if they're so, if people are so desperate that they're willing to even consider, and I mean, I've read maybe 50 different comments like that. Um, and, and then I've seen videos where some of these people are doing some very nefarious things. If they're that, that desperate for capital, what makes you think that they're not going to, in addition to that 8.8 .8 trillion, it was that how much they, they said it was, the cash pile on the side? I want to give you an accurate number because I don't want to say anything wrong. Give me one moment. Let me pull that up. I'm going to pull up that cash price. 8.8 .8 trillion. There it is. 8.8 .8 trillion. In addition to that 8.8 .8 trillion on the side, what? What is to lead me to believe that the people who are desperate won't also, when there's a bull run, pour their money in because they're willing to take risks. They don't have any capital. They want some capital. They want life changing gains. They want to buy that house. They want to buy that apartment. They want to go on multiple vacations and live how they used to in their youth, right? When, when their parents used to be able to do all that stuff when times were better, they want to be able to do that now in their adulthood, but they have not been able to. That hunger for capital will cause them, in my humble opinion, to pour their money into crypto, not the stock market into crypto because crypto makes fast gains crypto and nfts i've never seen anything like it and nfts you make even more money so that that industry i expect to take off it's very quiet right now because they're going to dominate and take over that industry so they're keeping it quiet on purpose until they can dominate and take that over just like now how they kept crypto in a, in a bear market kept it quiet until they dominated it and now all of a sudden look a bitcoin etf and google now allows ads at the same time time so they're keeping the nft thing quiet until they can dominate that and then you'll see that take off as well um or at least it'll be be positioned to but that's the only two places i see in, in the the youth of today are more in tuned with crypto even though they might make fun of it they might not like it you know all oh, dogecoin meme coins all that stuff like that but they're aware of it they're aware of how much money can come out of crypto and so now tying all this to, together the big money has their cash on the side because they want to make a ton of money. And I believe a lot of that's going to crypto. I really do. And this is why it may not make sense to some people why you're getting these calls. Remember this 8.8 .8 trillion. I'm going to keep saying it. Remember that when you read these um, these articles, because I've seen a lot of them, um, where they're calling for $500,000 Bitcoin, $1 million Bitcoin. You see, sometimes, you know, article writers, you have to have content. But... That doesn't mean you have to tell them all the reasons why you're saying something, because a lot of times they don't. Even sometimes I'm left scratching my head like, why did they just say that? But I know that there's a piece of information that they may know. They don't want to say it, but they can use. They don't want to give you the catalyst, but they can give you the outcome first. Does that make sense? Right. Because they want to keep the catalyst to themselves. Right. Um, so so you have the eight point eight trillion. You have the people in desperation um, that coming together and all of that being sparked by some sort of Bitcoin bull run or um, maybe there's clarity across the board. Maybe that comes out of nowhere. Who knows? At this point, everything is highly unpredictable. Right. But you have certain certain um, uh, congressional legislation that's been on their desk for quite some time. Anything can happen with that. If the right powers say, hey, flip that switch, they'll do it. 
they'll do it. Um, it's the same way that big money got behind that ETF. Remember, they were denying ETFs like back, uh, I mean, back to back to back to back. This was years ago, right? Couldn't get an ETF to save your life. BlackRock, Vanguard, I mean, not BlackRock, not Vanguard, BlackRock, Valkyrie, et cetera, got involved. And then all of a sudden, Bitcoin ETF. Yeah, sure, they had their little struggles. They had to put on the show. And that's all it is to me, a show. But they got it done, didn't they? Yes, they did. And the SEC stepped out of the way. They let it happen. Now you have the Bitcoin ETF. So when they want something to happen, it will happen. Same thing with the, the clarity. They're, everything happens for a reason. I'm, I'm convinced of it. This is what I believe. And um, so... Just to close this out, yeah, I believe the biggest bull run of all time is coming. Um, I think a lot of millionaires will be made. They're not financial advice. You got to make your own decisions. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a humble researcher. That's it. All right. Make up your own mind. I'm not an influencer. I'm not trying to have an influence over anyone. Um, but this is what I'm seeing. It's like it's, it's so strange. I tell you. A lot of um, XRP content creators, they have this phrase. I remember hearing it when I first got into crypto, the phoenix rises from the ashes. And But they used to say it in correlation with uh, XRP. But it's not just XRP. It's not. A lot of these coins stand to gain from failing systems in the U.S., failing mentalities in the U.S., failing policies in the U.S. They stand to win. Everybody's looking at crypto, I think, to be the big one to be the big bang. You can't get that from, I mean, you you could try. It'll be much slower in the stock market, much more uh, like pulling teeth in the stock market, in my humble opinion. Why do that when you can just have a Bitcoin? Do you remember that, that rip and run, that first rip? When we first started the channel, it came out of nowhere. It came out of nowhere. We were looking at XLM at such a low price, XRP at such a low price. Everything else, Algorand was at a low price. Batcoin was at a low price. Polygon was at a low price. I could go on and on. Right. And then out of nowhere, it was like April or May, maybe somewhere somewhere around there. I'm just going off the top of my head, folks. So this may not be super accurate, but you go back and look at those charts back then. You'll see what I'm talking about. For me, it seemed like out of nowhere. All of a sudden, Bitcoin just start taking off. Everything else start just flying. So this is what I'm saying. Everything's highly unpredictable. I think that same type of unpredictable um, um, takeoff is definitely possible any time this year. Or in 2025. And I think when it starts to go, it's going to go hard. I also think that once it reaches a certain height, it's going to crash hard as well. So I I understand people when they say, hey, listen, we're not we're not taking any chances this time. Once they have good gains, they're taking profit. And that's going to add to a massive crash afterward. But I, I'm just saying I understand why people feel they're going to take profit very quickly this time. I get it 100 percent. And there, and and no one is 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 uh, guaranteed tomorrow. So you know, yeah, I, I wouldn't play with my life either. It's like if I see, if, <laughs> well, listen, I'm just gonna leave it at that. You know, leave it at that. But man, when I'm I'm looking at some of these projects, some of these projects are so solid. I just don't see how in a um in a bull run. No, man, they're not staying low. There's no way. I just don't see it. They've done too much for too long, too big, too powerful, have good reputations, can prove they can show and prove what they're all about. You have all uh, I mean, you have automated market makers coming for a lot of things. People know about that now. People are much more educated. They're going to be using automated market makers. They're going to be wrapping stuff, delegating things, making yield. They're going to be staking things, making yield. I mean, the future crypto market looks like it's going to be a beast in my humble opinion a beast <laughs> you know <laughs> it's just personally how i feel you don't have to feel the same way all right you don't have to i'm not uh i'm just sharing but um that's like that's that's what i'm seeing right now that's what i'm feeling right now listen if some information comes in that changes my outlook that's definitely possible you know uh time changes change is the only constant and you know i try to be as logical and, and realistic as possible um so Futures looking extremely bright, in my humble opinion. You tell me how you feel about things. And I, I want to say thank you to every single person who was in the comment section on yesterday's video showing me love and things like that. That matters. And I appreciate that 100 percent. And I don't kid around when I when I type something in the in the uh, in the comment section. I mean that.
I mean that. So, you know, those of you who've shown me love, kindness and support, I will never forget your name. Your names will live forever forever. There's a lot of people that are very important people too that I'm like, I know some of your screen names are funny. I talk to a lot of people or some people consider them important people. Then I'll mention somebody's comment to them or something like that, you know, and just share the joy, you know? Um, so anyway, so now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, everybody, let's get to the money.